This video is not an exhaustive presentation of every single feature I've implemented in the operating system. It's just an overview of some of the big stuff that is easily demonstrable in a video. All right, so these are all the shaders that I have custom built. I've made sure each one of these is as fun to use as anything else. You can quickly toggle through each one of them from the Rofi menu and get a quick live preview of what they look like before applying them. So this is a wobbly shader and there's a lot more of where this came from. You can of course add as many shaders as you would like by just placing the shader in the shaders directory. Those shaders will immediately populate in the Rofi menu. Now this is genuinely a game changer of a shader. You can create one of those anaglyphs 3D glasses and you'll start seeing everything in 3D. The whole experience gets elevated to a whole different level, especially if you're consuming a lot of media like videos and movies and stuff. Now this is a pixelated shader. It's obviously not meant to be daily driven, but I've left it there for shits and giggles. These are all my Obsidian notes. They've all been meticulously organized and written for you to read. I've formatted them using the markdown syntax, so they look beautiful. One of my favorite things of this entire setup is to be able to theme every single element of the UI immediately by just changing your wallpaper. It generates a color palette from the wallpaper and themes the UI. I've got Matagen running as a theme engine to do the heavy lifting. If you're interested in the wallpapers I have, you can go over to my GitHub and get them from there. I've got over 1,000 of them and every single one was handpicked. They're all visually distinct to generate a wide variety of color palettes for theming the whole UI. Everything is super fluid. I've literally spent days fine tuning the default animation. It's been perfected at this point, I think. Just the animations alone make the whole experience of using the operating system so much more pleasurable. Now, this is another one of those incredibly useful features. You can transcribe your voice in real time with either Whisper if you only have a CPU or with Brockheed. You should give Linux a try, it's awesome. This is text-to-speech with high-quality voices using Kokoro. You have a bunch of voices to choose from, including Santa and a whole set of other voices. Linux is the best because it gives users complete control over their systems without artificial restrictions. It is transparent, secure, and efficient, allowing anyone to common in modify and optimize every. All these features are so frequently used that I have a keybind set for each and every one of them. This is another nice to have feature. It's OCR text extraction using Tesseract. You can extract text from almost any image with just a keybind, and it's surprisingly accurate. I love the ability to zoom in like this on the fly with a keybind. This is a script that I created to rotate your screen with a keybind. Um, it's especially useful if you're browsing social media and come across a video that was made for phones. Um, in that case, you could quickly rotate your screen and have the video make use of all the available screen real estate. You can scroll and have a lot of content be displayed on one page at the same time. You probably don't realize how useful it is until you actually need it. This app is called Blanket and it's pretty useful to just generate uh, constant background noise so you can focus on the task at hand. And this is my to-do list. Now this is another script I wrote. It's to allow you to fractionally scale your display in real time on the fly with a keybind. It goes as high as 3x and as low as your native monitor resolution. I love this wallpaper by the way. And then I've got these two way bars to choose from. Uh, that is of course again toggleable with the keybind. This one is a nerdy one. It's got a lot of functionality, a lot of features, but it doesn't look quite as good as the modern UI. So if you're more aesthetically inclined, you can choose this one. Also, you can quickly switch between light and dark mode. And this again uses Matagen under the hood to theme the entire operating system. Every app will ensure that it respects your theme. Since it generates a color palette from the wallpaper, it draws from a pool of a large shade of whites. Some GTK apps require for you to restart the app for it to inherit the new theme. As is tradition in Linux videos, here's a rice fast fetch. 
Now on the bottom, I've got on-screen display for things like caps lock toggling, brightness control, volume and media playback status. And of course, you guessed it, this also makes use of the Matigen color palette. You can quickly use this terminal user interface to dial in your timeout settings. I made this so you don't have to dive into the config files and be intimidated by the code. I've designed this OS to appeal to both kinds of users, people who aren't really all that technical and also hardcore Linux enthusiasts. I've written a script to unify almost every setting in this one row fee menu, so you can change stuff from right within here. And every last hyperlink keybind along with what it does is listed in this row fee menu. So you can learn what combination of keys is responsible for what. And these are obviously invocable right from the row fee menu. They will emulate a combination of key presses to trigger the functionality. This is another row fee script that essentially acts as a front end for Matigen that allows you to fine tune and get a very specific set of colors and contrast from your wallpaper. This vlog out menu, although it does inherit Madigen colors, it doesn't look as good as I want it to. So I'll get to working on this in the next few days and getting it to look a lot better than it does right now. And then I have another Rofi script for power menu options. It also tells you how long the system has been awake at the top. I love this app so much. I just wrote this last week. It produces high quality mechanical key sounds on each key press. And the best thing of all is that it runs entirely from RAM. So it's very efficient and fast. Uh, I've also made it so that it uses a UV virtual environment to not pollute your system with dependencies. It's as snappy as it can get with no latency. And this again can be toggled either from the Rofi menu or with a keybind. And my Spotify that I've got over here is themed and configured by Spicetify. By default, out of the box, Spotify will use your Madigen color palette, but you can also have it look a certain way with Spicetify. Since this is Linux, all of the apps and custom scripts that I've written are distro agnostic, so they can easily be integrated into your existing operating system. This is Edix UI. This doesn't really do anything, but it looks pretty cool, so I thought I would include it. You can also practice your typing speed with an included app called Key Punch. Now, that's pretty fast if I may say so myself. And now we've got MPV player that is highly customized with live thumbnail generation for progress bar scrubbing and navigating. This app in the background shows you your entire system's files along with their sizes in a beautiful visual pie chart. These are custom sliders that I wrote for volume control, brightness, and nightlight, and they caught me off guard as to how useful they turned out to be. I find myself using these to change my settings more than any other way of doing it because of how accessible it is with a keybind. So I've also written around 10 animation presets for you to quickly toggle between right from the Rofi menu. Some of the presets are just there for fun. They're intentionally designed to be exuberant and flamboyant. This one has an extra punch to it. It's overly bouncy. This is a slow motion preset for all the slots out there. I'm not gonna go through every single preset in the interest of time, but you can select the one you want based on your preference. Personally, the default one is pretty good. It's the best one. But you can also drop in your own animation config files in the animation directory and they will automatically be indexed and listed in this menu. If you're one of those people who find animations nauseating, you can disable animations altogether system-wide with a disabled preset and everything will just happen instantly. This is a resource manager that should be familiar to some of you, particularly if you've used Windows before. And then I have another script that quickly allows you to toggle between uh, window transparency, shadows, and blur. I don't know if you can tell, but I've designed this system with a lot of thought and passion. Also, this entire setup doesn't use more than 900 megabytes of RAM on startup. It's designed to be both lightweight and have a lot of utilities. If there's something that you think you're not gonna use, things like uh, text-to-speech, you could choose to entirely omit during setup. And if you later decide that you do want that feature, you can also install it after the fact by just running the individual script responsible for setting it up. The whole setup is automated with scripts. I understand it's not everyone's cup of tea to be so granular in setting up your system, that's why I've made Rofi toggleable menus for everything. I also have this high performance hardware accelerated Android 13 running directly on the kernel. 
using Android like this is indistinguishable from using it on a native tablet or on your phone. It's particularly intuitive if you have a touchscreen enabled device. And again, if you think you're not gonna use Android on uh, your PC, you can choose to skip this step entirely during setup. Now this is hands down my favorite feature. It's to be able to use Windows on bare metal with GPU pass through and zero latency right within Linux. So you can quickly switch back and forth between your Linux operating system and if there's something you wanna do within Windows, especially with apps that require Windows, like the Adobe Creative Suite. Setting up Windows like this is the only part of the whole operating system that is not automated because of how hardware specific it is. But I do have notes in Obsidian that delineate the step-by-step -step process of setting it up in an easy to follow manner. I personally installed Windows 10 over Windows 11, but the process is identical for both. I would highly recommend going with Windows 10 because of how resource efficient it is, relatively speaking of course, because it's Windows after all. So someone like myself who is unfortunately tied into the Adobe ecosystem, this is a game changer of a feature. The entirety of this video was edited right here within this virtual environment. And that is just testament to how smooth and imperceptible the latency is. The way that it achieves like you're running Windows natively on hardware is through shared memory buffer using looking glass. It works like regular windows, you can install anything you want. If there's a specific game that requires kernel level anti-cheat, you could theoretically use this to play those games. Games like Fortnite, Call of Duty and stuff. Now the prerequisite for you to be able to set this up like this requires you to at least have two GPUs. So you can pass through one of those to the virtual machine. While it is possible to do it if you only have one GPU, the setup process is a lot more complicated and well beyond the scope of this video. All right, so that concludes the video. So this project took me a lot longer than I anticipated it would. I first started out thinking that I would be done with it in over a week. Um, and I'm still here, you know, still in development. I do plan on supporting this on a long-term basis. And I have a cat that's kind of distracting right now. He's right here. I tried to give him an egg, but he wouldn't eat it. Oh, I think he's going to eat it now. He just wants pets. He's addicted to these pets. Oi, catch it, catch it, throw. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you found this video interesting or if, if you even found this amusing at all, head over to my GitHub and give it a star as a token of support. I would appreciate that a lot um, because I poured my blood, sweat and tears into this project and uh, this is all I've been thinking for the last uh, eight months. This cat is so distracting, it's, he's trying to get on my lap and everything. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this video up right here. So everything I showcase in this video is open source on my GitHub. Uh, if you need anything at all, feel free to uh, take it without attributing any um, credit. I don't mind at all. Uh, have a nice one. I'm Faiz and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Oi. There you go. He's finally eating it. <laughs>